and we are inquiring deeply why human beings, after so many million years, why have we become like this? Divided, fragmented, contradictory, confused, everlastingly seeking pleasure, never ending his sorrow, never comprehending his relationship to the world and to each other. Why there is this infinite conflict between man and man, this perpetual conflict between man and man, between man and woman. Why? Can we live together without conflict? Krishnamurti posed this question in many different ways. Where there is division, he said, there must be conflict. Yet we divide ourselves into nations, races, and religions. We call ourselves conservatives, liberals, lower class and upper class, as we split and divide into ever smaller groups and subgroups, until we arrive at last at the irreducible I, the final category, that which separates us from all others. We may realize intellectually the root of our conflicts, but that does not necessarily solve them. It is important to understand the way Krishnamurti approached these questions, not from a fixed conclusion, not from resolutions arrived at generations ago through discussion and argument, or even by the revelations of great teachers, but rather by probing, questioning, turning us back to ourselves to look anew at the question of conflict. In this way, Krishnamurti moved beyond myth and tradition to a vital, continuing process for living now. Krishnamurti on conflict. We accept this conflict. Or, if we do not accept it and want to find a solution for it, we go to the professionals to help us the psychologist, the priest, some authority, some specialist that will help us to get over our particular conflict with another. And apparently, as one observes, if you have also observed, this conflict doesn't end. You may cover it over. You may run away from it. You may somehow forget it and accept it. But there is the conflict inwardly in our relationship with all human beings, however intimate, however distant. We are never asked why, whether that conflict between human beings, intimate or otherwise, can ever end. We are observing together, so you are not learning it from the speaker. He is not teaching you anything. Please understand this. He is not teaching you a thing. Therefore, you are not his followers. He's not your authority. He's not your guru. They've all led you astray. Because they've never been able to solve this problem. Or never tackle this problem. So. 
In observing together, we're going to discover why this conflict exists, whether it's possible to end completely, not theoretically, not for a day, end it. This conflict exists, must exist. I don't want to tell you because it becomes so silly. If I tell you, you'll say yes, that's quite right. And then you are back in the. It isn't something that you yourself have discovered. You know what happens when you discover something for yourself psychologically? You have immense energy. And you need energy to free the mind of its conditioning. I want to have somebody who will tell me that I am marvellous. So I am building an image about her. And she also wants to be possessed, wants to fulfil in me, sexually, wants me to be something different from what I am. So there is this. Each one, living it may be for a week or a day or a years, have built an image which becomes knowledge. Follow this, please follow this. Knowledge about each other. Knowledge. May I go into it a little bit? This is serious. Knowledge is destructive in relationship. Right? If I if you once understand this, so I have to inquire a great deal into the question of knowledge. What place has knowledge in life? Are we, are we together in this observation? Will knowledge Transform man. What place has knowledge in the mutation or in the ending of conditioning? Please, I am not teaching you. You are observing with all your energy, with your capacity to see this fact that where there is knowledge in relationship, there must be conflict. We are asking, can man live on this earth peacefully without suffering? As long as there is separation, division, there must be conflict, and conflict brings about sorrow.
as long as I, as one, <coughs> is separate from his wife, not biologically but psychologically, inwardly, when there is that separation between the two people, however intimate they are, and that separation, that division, brings about conflict. And conflict is the very nature of sorrow. Because in that conflict, we are destroying each other. I wonder if you follow this. Can we live together without conflict? I may, have, I may have hurt you, and you may have hurt me. Why should we keep that going? Why should we keep that record of pain? One has lost one's son, One loved that son, or the brother, or the husband, or what you will. And there is shedding of tears, trying to escape from the actual fact that he or she has gone. And feeling the pain, the anxiety, the loneliness of it, trying to escape from that loneliness. But you may escape, but it's always there, deep in one's heart and in the deep recesses of one's own brain. What are we holding on to? The image, the memory, the past. We never seem to let go that image, the past. So when one watches without any motive, without any sense of direction, just to watch this whole movement of suffering, not only one's own suffering, but the whole of humanity suffering, of which we are part. No, we are, we are humanity. If you understand your own sorrow, watching it like a precious jewel, Then that very observation, an observation of that, with that clarity and purity can only come when there is no sense of escape from it. Then there is an ending of that suffering. Then you are not contributing to the world sorrow. That means you are no longer separate from the rest of humanity. If I may talk a little about myself, I've Please watched do. it all. I watched it in India. Mm -hmm. The sannyasis, the monks, the gurus, the disciples, the politicians, all over the world. I happen to have 
somehow I met them all. The writers, the famous people, the painters who are very well known. Hmm? They either they have come, most of them have come to see me. And I, it is a sense of deep anxiety that if they don't struggle, there will be nothing. Mm-hmm. There will be failure. They will. That is that way of living, is the only and the righteous way of living. To drive oneself to be what is called what? productive. Productive, progressive. Mm-hmm. Progressive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we are taught this from childhood. Oh yes. Our education mm-hmm. is that. To battle not only with yourself, with your neighbour. And yet love the neighbour. It becomes too ridiculous. So, having stated that, is there a way of living without conflict? I say, from, I say there is, obviously. Which is to understand the division, to understand the conflict to see how fragmented we are, not try to integrate the fragments, which is impossible, but to, but out of that perception, the action is entirely different from integration. Mm-hmm. Seeing the fragmentation, which bring about conflict, which bring about division, which bring about this Constant battle, anxiety, strain, heart failure. You follow, so that's what's happening. To see it, to perceive it, and that very perception brings an action which is totally different from the action of conflict. Because the action of conflict has its own energy, brings its own energy. Which is divisive, which is destructive, violent. But the energy of perception and acting is entirely different. And that energy is the energy of creation. Now, how do you, as a psychologist, psychotherapist, or help another who is deeply hurt and is unaware of it, and to see if it is possible not to be hurt at all? I don't address the question about is it possible to not be hurt at all. That doesn't come up. Why? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be a reasonable question? Well, it seems to be what we're asking here. It's an, it, is a, it, it is the essence of the question that we're asking. We ask it in terms of particulars only in therapy. And you're asking it more generally. Is it possible to end this hurt, period? Not just a particular hurt that I happen to have. So how, do, how should we proceed? Well, it would seem that the structure that makes hurt possible is what we have to get at. What makes hurt possible in the first place? Not this hurt or that hurt. Well, I think that's fairly simple. Why am I hurt? Because you say something to me which is not pleasant. Well, why should that hurt you? Because I have an image about myself as being a great man. You come along and tell me, don't be an ass, (laughs) Uh and I get hurt. What is it that's being hurt there? There, the image which I have about myself. 
I'm a great cook, mm -hmm. a great scientist, a great carpenter, whatever you will. I've got that picture in, in myself, and you come along and put a pin into it. Mm -hmm. And that gets heard. Mm -hmm. The image gets heard. The image is me. Uh, well, I feel you know, that will not be terribly clear to many people. I mean, how can I be an image? You see, many people will ask. You see, how can an image get hurt? Because if an image is nothing at all, why does it hurt? Because I've been invested into the, in that image a lot of feeling. Yes. A lot of uh, ideas, emotions, reactions. All that is me. That's my image. It doesn't look like an image to me, though. It looks like something real. Ah, that, that of course, mm -hmm. for most people, is very real. Yeah. But that is me. The reality of that image is me. Yes. Well, can we get clear that it's an image and not real? Image is never real. Symbol is never real. You're saying that I'm just a symbol. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big step. So what is love, as we know it? Love brings a great deal of conflict in our life, a great deal of pleasure, a great deal of anxiety, fear, jealousy, envy. Don't you know all this? So what is, is desire love? Is pleasure love? Is love in the realm or in the field of thought? And apparently, for most of us, it is in that field, love of conflict, pain, anxiety, and thought. And to understand what love is, I'm not understand, you know, have the depth of it, the greatness of it, the flame of it, the beauty of it. How can there be jealousy? How can there be ambition? aggression, violence. And can there be, can one be free completely of all these things? Please do ask this question. Where there is love, then there is, do what you will, it will be right action. It will never bring conflict to one's life. So it's important to see that jealousy, antagonism, conflict and all the pain of relationship has no place in love, where there is love. And can one be free of all that? Not tomorrow, now. You understand my question? Because as you pointed out yesterday, time, which is the past, the present and the future, 
all time is contained in the now. I went into it carefully yesterday. And if we say, I will cultivate love, or I will try and get rid of my jealousy, and so on, then when you are trying to be, to be free, try it. Then you will never be free. Right? I wonder if you understand this. When you say, I will do my best, which is so silly. <laughs> which means that one has really not fully perceived the truth that all time, the past, the present, and the future, are in the now. Now, in mean present, actually. Because what you if you don't do something now, it will be continued tomorrow. The future is in the now. You understand this? Come on. Hmm? So, can one put aside completely all the causes of conflict, which is the self, the me, so that there is this sense of flame, the greatness of beauty, love. Mm -hmm.